Hi, and welcome to this episode of Home Care Today. This is 21st Century Healthcare Consultants' official podcast. I'm Kate Rose, your host. I'm here today chatting with a friend of mine, Ms. Kathy Stratton, who is an RN clinical manager here at 21st Century. Um, and we're just going to hang out for a little bit. Hope that our conversation will be helpful and informative to you. And if there's ever anything that you guys ever want to hear, please, all you have to do is just email us and let us know so that we can make sure that we're bringing you what's going to be most helpful and what's going to be most interesting in supporting you in your endeavors. So anyway, here I am with Kathy. Thanks for being here. Hi, I'm glad to be here today with you. We have had um, a lot of fun just chit-chatting this morning. I found out that Kathy is from an area of the country up around Maryland. I graduated from high school in Northern Virginia, so we've been talking old things and high school and adventures in elementary school as she was a, a nurse when she got uh, on her way professionally mm-hmm. as a high school or elementary, elementary school? Elementary school. Elementary school nurse. Which is always fun. <laughs> um, I can only imagine. I know that little kids can be absolutely wonderful and mm-hmm. they can be absolutely, um, shall we say, challenging at times, especially yeah. if they don't feel well. Mm-hmm. And energetic. They can be very energetic. Are they as energetic when they don't feel well? Um, no. No. That's when you can tell the difference. <laughs> and that's when they need to be comforted and taken mm-hmm. good care of. Well, thank you for the time that you spent working with little kids, because I know that's welcome. a special calling yes. in life. It was fun. <laughs> yeah. And so tell me a little bit about now what you're doing here at 21st Century. Well, I'm one of the clinical managers with 21st Century, and I help clients through the process of maintaining compliance and learning how to run their agency within all the regulations that they have to follow regarding either if it's an accrediting organization or if it's state or federal regulations that they have to follow. And so I'm guessing that your perspective on that would be from the clinical nursing side? Yes, correct. Correct. And it's also interpretation of the compliance regulations they have to follow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as we were talking before we started airing today, tell me what is the difference between home care and home health agencies? Okay, the difference between home care and home health is home health is Medicare, certif- Medicare certified agencies. So they, are, they can bill Medicare for their services that they provide. Home care is skilled, but they don't have the certification through Medicare billing. And in addition to that, there's also personal care agencies that don't do any skilled care. They provide personal care services, meaning assistance with their activities of daily living. There is so much to know about this. So Mm -hmm. I'm so happy whenever we are able to bring somebody in who's an expert in their field like you are. So you're talking about some of the complexities and the distinctions between the different types of agencies. What needs to be included when um, someone is creating good policies and procedures for home care and home health agencies? What really do they need to make sure that they include as they're creating these documents? Well, depending, again, depending on the type of agency they are, will depend on what needs to be included in their policies. So if they're Medicare, they'll have to include any of the Medicare conditions of participation that they have to follow to maintain compliance. If they're, they're not Medicare, they'll have to have, they won't have to include the Medicare regulations in regards to the Medicare requirements for billing, but they will have to include their state and some federal regulations as the, the Medicare agencies will also include state regulations as well. How do you make sure that all of the forms that are necessary, whether it's the admission forms or whatever, how do you make sure that those are produced in a way that, as far as standards are concerned, are both professional and compliant? Um, The way that we ensure the compliance with the standards, with either the state or federal, is that we keep updated with the requirements that each state or the federal um, government in, implies or implicates that we need to include or change those forms to maintain compliance. And when we are reviewing these documents with the agencies, we review the whole process, the admission process, every document that's included, and um, educate them on the reason that those documents are to be included so that when they're um, utilizing these forms, they uh, can educate their staff members on the importance of compliance and completing all the documentation that is required. 
Can you, can you give us an example of what you're talking about there? Well, for example, one of the uh, Medicare requirement is that you have to include um, interventions and goals based on the, the patient's uh, di diagnosis provided by the physician. So you have to, what is, it's called a face-to-face -face requirement. So if you receive a referral on a patient and their primary diagnosis documented by the physician is, let's say, congestive heart failure. So your plan of care needs to make sure that the primary focus is uh, congestive heart failure mm -hmm. on your education to your patient and your plan of care that you're developing when you admit the patient under your agency services. So you have to, obviously, everything you do has to hit a certain target. You have to be aiming at whatever the, whatever the uh, regulation is or the compliance point and things need to be written and administered so that you're constantly aiming at whatever is important for that particular action or that particular phase of care. Correct, and a big, a big deficiency that we see in agencies is not in personalizing the care plan to the patient's needs. And it can be as simple as a medication that's an as-needed medication. You take it as needed, but you have to implicate into the plan of care what that PRN medication is to be taken for, and therefore it personalizes it for that particular patient. It seems to me that a common sense thought would be this is always personalized care on every level because everybody's different, mm -hmm. right? And yes. even though there are standards of compliance and procedural you know, activities and what have you that need to be done, it would make sense that they need to be adjusted or they need to be there needs to be a way to accommodate those individualistic needs of every patient that crosses through a home agency. Yes, and that's true. And we do educate our clients on individualizing and what the actions they need to um, put into place in their agency, education of their staff members, and education of their patients to individualize those specific needs and requirements. Do you do that in, in, in a form that's um, like uh, a, a course or a place on the website where you have these compliance steps that they need to take or these common sense thoughts that they need to have as they're working through all of their different patients. Um, do you have it as any ongoing education? Is it part of a program that they have access to, whether it's through 21st Century or, or any place else? Is that typically the way it's done? Yes, we provide them with um education in regards to the documents that we provide them. Mm -hmm. They're called Conditions of Participation with Medicare. So Medicare agencies, we provide them with those conditions of participation, and any time there's an update or change, we make them aware of that so that they know what they need to do to be compliant. How do you monitor the changes, in the, in, whether it's legislative or uh, on, a, on a more local level, how do you monitor the changes that come down the pike so that you can then inform your clientele that they need to be aware of this? Well, we actually uh, enroll in updates through CMS, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid, mm -hmm. to make sure that we are updated with any regulation changes or updates that usually happen every year. Usually they implement them in the following year, but they study it throughout the whole year and finalize it towards the end of the year and we'll educate our clients on the new changes that have taken place. How do you actually get that information out to your clients? We usually receive it via email. <clears throat> okay, and then you turn around and email that out to them? Yes, correct. When an agency is, is putting together um, an effective emergency management plan, um, what steps are involved in that? Well, first we have to make sure that they do a risk assessment of the area they're located in. So any activities or emergency events that have historically occurred in their area, such as hurricanes here in Florida, an agency here would include a risk for hurricanes. Mm -hmm. And so you establish your care, your emergency management plan based on what you need to include to be prepared for emergency situations. How specific does that plan need to be? It's very specific, and they do agency-wide testing. They have to do agency-wide testing, so they do a drill, mm -hmm. including uh, every aspect of their agency. That is also to include their patients. So they do active drills every year, and they get involved in any community drills 
that take place in their area. In case it's a larger disaster mm -hmm. that affects more than just that Correct. one area. Correct. Okay. Correct. Interesting. Do people typically learn by going through that drill process? Yes, mm -hmm. they do. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, 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 but, but that's, in other words, it's really worth the time and the energy and, the, and probably the expense uh, on some level anytime that you do a drill that's that large scale and involves that many people. But how, my goodness, how necessary that really is, isn't it? Yes, it is. And for them to develop this emergency plan themselves while we guide them through that process, it's, that's very beneficial because they, they see how it all comes together and how they have to include every aspect of their agency and their community. You know, as we're talking, I'm, I'm just, I'm always, with any guests that we ever have on our podcast, I'm always so impressed, first of all, because people like yourself, you've spent so much time learning and growing in the field and then administering that knowledge in a way that is... Um, both useful but also helpful to the clients that you serve. Mm -hmm. um, what is it that if you're going to do a survey, I hear a lot about surveys in this industry. Mm -hmm. Tell me just a little bit about what that means. Well, agencies have, are required to go through specific surveys depending on the type of agency they are. So we have accreditation organizations that do surveys and we have state surveys and we have Medicaid waiver surveys. So depending on the type of agency, the services they provide, depends on the type of surveys that they have to go through. So we prepare them for the surveys and the processes they have to have in place to be successful. And what does preparation for that look like, typically? Um, well, it, it, you go through all the processes that they have to maintain compliance in throughout their whole agency, whether it's um, client care, whether it's administrative, whether it's personnel requirements, we go through all of that information to make sure they understand it and have impl implicated it into their, or introduced it into their agency so that all the steps are in place for them to maintain the compliance with regulations. Do you find that most people pass their surveys at the first run at it, or do they need to go back and brush up and make some plans for correction? I'd say probably 98% of our agencies pass the first time. That's a huge percentage. Mm -hmm. What do you attribute that to? Making sure that we individualize our um, consulting education process to the client's needs. Making sure they, we take our time with them and um, learn their specific educational needs that they may have during the process, throughout the process. Based on the individual agency, mm -hmm. the staff, and, and I would imagine it could even be where they're located geographically. Yes. That changes from place to place yes. sometimes, doesn't it? Yes, it does. What, of everything that you do here at 21st, mm -hmm. what would be one or two things that you enjoy doing the most? Um, I really enjoy speaking with our clients and getting them to um, point A to point B to point Z mm -hmm. and point out to them how, how much they learn along the way, especially if they have uh, not a whole lot of experience in the home health, home care industry. Mm -hmm. And they, they really don't even realize how much they're learning across, along the way until they get to that point where they're ready for survey. You probably do some encouraging mm -hmm. and some feather smoothing and... Yes, cheerleading. Cheerleading, mm -hmm. okay, all right. When you think just in general about some of the people that you've worked with, do any stories come to mind, any specific uh, challenges or victories? Um, well, I had a couple of agencies. I actually have had um, one in, I think it was in Oklahoma, I believe, that had previously, before coming here, had gone through the process and did not pass. So she came here. Now when you say come here, you mean to 21st, 21st century. 21st century, yes. Okay. And um, did not pass previously before becoming our client. So the third time around, she passed. And she was so excited and so happy because it's a very stressful process, it can be. So we try to make it not stressful for them. How would you do something so that it wouldn't be quite so stressful? Um, well, we point out to them, especially I do, we, I make sure they don't think about too many things at once. You have to take 
one thing at a time mm -hmm. through the whole process. The old how do you eat an elephant theory. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Because if you try to think about too many things at once, your thoughts just get jumbled up in your head and you just don't grasp what you're supposed to be grasping to um, imp imp put into your agency's process. Mm -hmm. So the, the story that you're remembering of the individual that was just so excited and mm -hmm. they finally passed, do you find that that gives you a bit of a bond with that client? Do you, later on down the road, do you guys remember, oh yes, remember when we got through that, how wonderful that was and look how far you've come? I guess that would be in the cheerleading and the encouragement category, mm -hmm. wouldn't it? Yes, and you do definitely um, develop a bond with your clients. Well, this is, for most people, we're talking about a huge commitment, mm -hmm. both financially, energetically, personally, professionally. Mm -hmm. When someone decides to start an agency or to grow an agency, mm -hmm. there's a whole lot that goes into that. And it's a very personal experience, I would imagine, a lot on the line. Mm -hmm. So the work that you're able to do, not just the technical side of things, but that human side where you can build those relationships with your clients and you're able to walk with them through the good times and the harder times. So, so for example, let's say somebody did not do um, as well on their survey as they had hoped. What would be the typical um, plan of correction that you would then go to that agency and say, okay, this is what you didn't do well, so this is how we're going to make sure that you can do it better and you can get that survey passing that you need. Mm -hmm. Well, what we would do is uh, determine where exactly the process fell apart in their agency, whether it was with their staff documentation or what, whether it was an administrative task that wasn't done properly. Mm -hmm. And then we develop um, educational interventions for the agency to correct those deficiencies that they received during survey. And you work very specifically with that agency on those projects, right? Oh yes, definitely. What, in the last couple of minutes that we have, mm -hmm. what lights you up? What gets you going in the morning when you're getting ready to come to work and you're thinking that, all right, this is going to be my day, what really gets you excited about the work that you do? Um, the excitement, really, it really comes to the point where when they go through their survey and they pass survey and they have very few or zero deficiencies and they're so happy that this process that's lengthy and stressful, mm -hmm. that they were successful and now they have their own business and they can get moving to the next steps to be sure that they can take care of their patients the proper way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and document. So you have an investment in them, so to speak, professionally, mm -hmm. but emotionally and relationship-wise. So yes. mm -hmm. in a way, do you feel like you're kind of making friends along, along the way? I do. Sometimes I tell them I feel like they're my children, and I take them in as children, and they have to fly away when they pass their survey and you know obtain their licensure or their accreditation. Uh, that could be hard for some people to mm -hmm. leave the nest, so to speak, I bet. Yes. But they always have they always have the ability to come back. Mm -hmm. You all I know here at 21st Century there's a monthly boot camp where people can come in from all over the country and do continuing education opportunities and what have mm -hmm. you. So even once we leave the nest, we're never really leaving home. Is that fair That's to say? Correct. That's correct. Good. <laughs> Well, I want to thank you for your time today. Thanks for sharing what you do and how you do it, but also why you do it. Because a lot of times, I know in our family, we've had a recent conversation, my husband and I, about how important it is to remember that it's not always about the meal, so to speak, at a restaurant. Sometimes it's about the experience of being in the restaurant and enjoying the whole thing. So mm -hmm. thanks for being that kind of a teacher and that kind of a supervisor here at 21st to make sure that it's not just about the bottom line. It's important, but it's about people. It's about building those relationships and making sure that we empower people to succeed at what they're doing out in the field and taking good care of the patients that they have. Oh, you're very welcome. It's my pleasure. To Come be on here. back anytime. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us. Again, I'm Kate Rose, your host here at 21st Century Healthcare Consultants' official podcast, Home Care Today. Thanks for joining us, and we hope to see you next time.